Hello and welcome to lesson 8.2 in the Alice tutorial series. Today we're going to be taking on a uh, topic that really helps you manipulate the camera and make some more complex animations, and that's going to be the dummy camera. Using dummy cameras, we'll be able to set up pre-staged camera positions in our scene and then easily change back and forth. Uh, so if you had, say, like a, a zoomed in image of one of your objects and then another overview and maybe a third camera that you want uh, connected to say a car that's driving around a track. It allows you to set up multiple cameras. Now you'll still only have the one camera in the scene but essentially what you're going to do is drop objects at different places throughout the scene as a waypoint for your camera to switch between views. It makes setting up multiple camera angles really easy and it's an essential skill for making uh, cut scenes in games. So let's go ahead and get started with lesson 8.2 on the dummy camera in Alice. So here we are in Alice and I have a grass world set up and let's go ahead and add a couple of objects to our world. So I'm gonna scroll over to farm here and let's start I'm gonna add a, a farmhouse here in the background and let's go ahead and also add a barn. So we're going to cam pan the camera way over here, add a, a barn, and rotate that a little bit so that it's facing away from the house. Uh, I want a scarecrow here next to the house. So let's rotate this guy and kind of push him up against the back of the house here. That looks about right. Let's see if there's any other objects that we're going to want to use. Uh, maybe we'll uh, put some straw over here next to the the barn and we'll scale this up a little bit so it looks a little bit better there maybe a little bit bigger perfect and let's push this guy up to the side of the barn here it's right about there and we'll duplicate it a couple times so what we have here is just a, a really simple uh, barn scene that we're going to be used using to set up dummy cameras now there's a lot going on the scene, way more than I can simply get with a single camera. I've got the barn over here on the right, I've got the house on the left, and it's nearly impossible to get everything in the scene in a usable fashion. And furthermore, if I were to start adding, say, animations, say we're to have a, a person walk out of the house and some action going on over here, meanwhile I can animate some animals over here, this can become a rather complicated scene particularly because we only have one camera here. And sometimes programming the camera can be a little bit diff difficult. If I want to move the camera from the front of this house over to the side of the barn, I'll have to figure out how many meters to move it. and There's a, a lot of things to consider, but there's a much easier way. And that way is dummy cameras. In order to take advantage of dummy cameras, we're going to use a specific method on the camera that is very useful. If you right click on your camera, and select methods, you're going to get camera set point of view to. And right now I could say set the point of view to the entire scarecrow and the camera is going to move so that it's seeing exactly what the scarecrow sees. If I were to move it to one of the bales of hay, I could right click on the straw bale and set the point of view to, or excuse me, right click on the camera, not the straw, and set the point of view to one of the straw bales and I'm going to get a view from the straw bale, and that's the one that's on the ground, so it looks a little bit goofy. But the point of the method is that I can immediately move the camera so that it's seeing the same point of view as an object. To access the dummy cameras, we're going to need to click on More Controls. Click on More Controls here, and you'll see some options uh, such as Aspect Ratio, and that will change the dimensions of your camera. I'm going to leave mine to 4.3, but we've got an option here called Drop Dummy at Camera. So let's set up a scene in which we're looking at the front door of the farmhouse. Maybe I want to have some action out here later with some animation. So I set this up and I say, gosh, this is a pretty good camera right here. I'm going to click Drop Dummy at Camera and a new objects, a new folder is going to show up in my object panel. This is called dummy objects. I like to rename this cameras. You can leave it as dummy objects, but this lets me know that everything inside this folder is a different camera. 
and it also created a new object for us called dummy. I'm going to right click on this and rename it house front door. So I know this is the camera that's looking at the front door of the house. Now when I back the camera up, I can see there's an invisible object in my scene now. This is my dummy camera. When you drop a dummy camera, the point of view of the dummy camera is set to mimic the camera at that point. So as I move the camera around, I can select move camera to dummy, select house front door, and my camera will immediately go back to the same position it was when I dropped the dummy camera. If I wanted to drop another camera, and we'll call this the, uh, the barn scene. So this looks like a good barn scene. I'm going to drop another dummy at camera by clicking drop dummy at camera. It creates a new object in my camera's folder called dummy, and I'm going to rename this barn front door. With both a house front door and a barn front door, I can now move the camera to the house, to the barn, and I haven't lost my ability to freely move my camera around. If I get a good look of the, at the scarecrow over here, click drop dummy at camera, rename that object, scarecrow. I'm now able to move the camera to any of the three dummy cameras that I have set up. This is how you're going to use dummy cameras in your scene. In addition to simply moving the camera in this add object screen, we can also use these cameras in our code to move the camera around as our animation is running. Outside of the add objects window, like once I'm out of the screen, I won't have this move camera to dummy. Another way that you can get the camera to the dummy cameras is to click on your camera object, right click and select the set point of view to method and select the camera that you want the camera to zoom to. So let's start at the house front door. This is going to be the start of my scene right here. In the scene, I want my camera to pan slowly to the front of the barn door to wait and then zoom in on the, the scarecrow. I'm going to select my camera object and drag it down to my method window and tell it that I want to set the point of view of the camera to one of my dummy cameras, in this case the barn front door. Since I don't want this to occur in one second, I'm going to select duration and let Alice know that I want this animation to take place over 10 seconds. I'm also going to put a wait command at the front end and have the cam camera pause for about 4 seconds. So the way this code executes, the camera will stay put for 4 seconds and then it will set its point of view to the barn front barn door, which is our dummy camera, and we'll have a 10 second pan from the front of the house to the barn front door. So we wait our 4 seconds and now the camera will start moving and in 10 seconds it will visit its final location which is the barn front door. I can have the camera wait a little bit longer by adding another wait. We'll have it wait at the barn door for two and a half seconds and finish by setting the point of view to the scarecrow and having it zoom in on the scarecrow over a duration of, let's call this uh, seven seconds should be about right. So the animation will now move the camera to the barn door, pause, and then to the scarecrow. And we're doing this using dummy cameras. There's no limit to the amount of dummy cameras that you can have. In addition, you can set the dummy camera's vehicle properties so that they're permanently attached to objects are moving. After this animation is done running, I'll show you what I mean. So that is our animation moving from the front of the house to the barn to the scarecrow. Now let's take a look at the vehicle property for a dummy camera. Okay everybody, we're going to put that vehicle property uh, dummy camera idea on hold for just a second. Uh, this video is starting to get just a tad bit long and with creating a new world and adjusting the vehicle property it might make this video a little bit longer than I intended. So we're going to go ahead and cut this right here. There isn't going to be a challenge program for lesson 8.2. Uh, the challenge program for dummy cameras will come in lesson 8.3 after we address the vehicle properties 
of the dummy cameras. So hopefully you have a basic idea of how dummy cameras work, how to add them to your scenes. In lesson 8.3, we're going to adjust the vehicle properties of those dummy cameras and look at some of the nuances and how that works. So I look forward to seeing everybody in lesson 8.3, the vehicle properties of dummy cameras. As always, if you're having any problems, something's not working for you, or you can't figure something out, go ahead and leave your questions in the comments, and I can certainly help you out and make everything work a little bit better. Thank you so much for watching the Alice tutorial series, and have a great day.